All right, everybody, welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today I keep getting this recurring question, which is a pretty good question. It's, it's a question I've had for quite some time, which is what can I do if I have any of my crypto or digital assets on a failing centralized exchange such as Celsius, Voyager, FTX, and our BlockFi, and how does that work with taxes? So uh, we've got that question and some other things we're going to ask for, and we're going to take a look at that uh, by bringing on David Kemmerer, co-founder of CoinLedger. David, thanks for stopping by. Yeah, it's good to be back. Thanks for having me, Rob. Hope hope all is well in spite of the crazy markets, although we've had a rally in the past uh, week or so. Hey, man, I'll take this rally. This is a good rally. I'll take I don't care if it's a bear market or it's the next bull run. I have no yeah. idea. I don't think anybody else does, but I'll take it. So we're going to start off with, with that question. And then also, uh, if you could be so kind, give us a little walkthrough of Coin Ledger because I'm going to have to use this again. This has been my third straight year I've been using it. And then also, I wanted to talk to you about that portfolio tracker. So let's just jump into it. First things first. What yeah, so the big question, we get it a lot too. You know, what... What do I do for tax purposes? Can I take a loss if I have crypto locked up now in you know, Voyager, Celsius, FTX? The bad news is it's kind of a bummer for taxpayers because essentially you can't take a loss until you've really settled up with these platforms. What do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Essentially, once you definitively get back or don't get back, whatever settlement there there becomes, that is the moment when you can take a tax loss. So essentially, right, you have, if, if you're in this position, you have a claim to, right. you know, assets of these companies. Um, it's likely that claim is going to be outstanding for a while. Now, maybe with comp companies like Voyager, slightly different, but it's not until that claim gets fulfilled, you know, is that's the point when you can claim the tax loss. So an example, let's say I have $10,000 of assets locked up in Celsius. Mm -hmm. And let's say that bankruptcy res resolves three years from now and I get $2,000 worth of assets back. It's in that year that I can take that $8,000 capital loss because I have officially realized kind of my loss. I've booked that loss. I've settled up with Celsius. I've gotten my distribution. And that's when I'm going to file that loss with my taxes. If you, you know, if your claim's outstanding, that's when it's like, well, you can't do it yet. Um, gotcha. Questions on that answer. Okay. So there's, there's a couple of things with that. So if it's, if it's outstanding, so right now it's looking like uh, Voyager is going to be going to be bought out by Binance. Once yep. that goes through, then of course we settle up and go, okay, it was worth this. Now it's worth this. There's a loss and I'm good. But as far as like, like the outstanding ones, cause Celsius has taken forever. They seem to want to believe that they're going to make this great, fantastic company. Good luck. And that's going to take years in the process. So not only do we have to deal with the losses there, but we can't even claim the losses on our taxes. That's what it sounds like until we, we actually settle up. Correct. That's right. Just that's sure. right. Exactly. Okay. So some of these processes are going to go faster than others. It sounds like right voyagers will be able to settle up quicker. Um, and you're exactly right. And you're something. Gotcha. So and then also there's a couple things. So like, let's say for the Voyager thing, it goes through. There's two types of, of losses I want to apply this to. One is my income and one is my cap gains. Now, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong here. It's only three thousand dollars per year that I can apply that to. So let's just say that I have, you know, a hundred thousand dollars on, on the platform. And then they say, okay, 50%, if 50,000 is what I get back, I have a loss of 50,000. I can only apply $3,000 per year to my income of what I generate from my job, my businesses or something else, but I can, it's an unlimited amount on the cap gains. Correct. Right. This is where you're exactly right. But the U S right. Likes to make things complicated. So, oh yeah. To put it another way is, you know, you get back, like you said, in your example, $50,000, mm -hmm. you've realized a $50,000 capital loss, right? Mm -hmm. And so capital losses can deduct, like you said, unlimited against other capital gains. What are other capital gains? Selling other cryptocurrencies, selling stocks, selling okay. real estate, right? If you sold your house, all that can deduct. So you know, again, a good example that I like to use, let's say I sold my house that same year and I booked $100,000 of gains, that $50,000 cryptocurrency loss that I realized can deduct 
fully with that. Now I only have $50,000 of taxable gains from selling that house. So that reduced my taxable income by a whole bunch, right? Now let's say you don't have any other forms of capital gains from stocks, from real estate that year. You'd have what's called a net capital loss for this year of $50,000. $3,000 can deduct against your ordinary income. Right. Again, that's right. income from W-2 stuff like your job, other things. And the rest carries forward to future years and will keep deducting against future capital gains at an unlimited amount until that whole $50,000 capital loss has been kind of used up. So again, uh, kind of annoying that you have to keep track of all this stuff, but you will be able to use all of that capital loss as long as you know you keep fairly good records. Yeah, which is another reason why I think uh, some of these things need to be pushed along so we can actually you know realize those and go for. And then real quick, just to make sure, if we're talking about time frames, there's no time limit. Let's just say in like you know 20 years, I decide to sell a house. I'm like, oh, I have that fifty thousand, forty five thousand uh, dollar cap gain loss. I, I can implement. So it wouldn't really be like there's a time limit for that, correct? Right. No, just each year you have that carry forward loss. And depending on what's reported on 8949, it will deduct um, against any gains. And so, you know, if that's years and years in the future, correct, you can carry that forward. Yeah. And just remember, everybody, uh, it doesn't matter if if you're trying to take a look at losses. When you move your crypto between uh, crypto wallets, that is not a taxable event, just so you know. But if you pay for goods and or services and or sell your crypto, then of course it does. Also, if you swap your crypto for something, let's just say you buy Bitcoin at 10,000, goes to 20,000, you swap it for USDC, that is a taxable event. But moving it between wallets is not. So just remember those things when you're saying, I'm gonna make sure that I get these uh, capital losses. Make sure you know what, you're, <laughs> what we're doing here. Okay, exactly. David, thanks for answering that question. I know it's not what people wanna hear, but it is the truth and we can actually move forward. So that would be the next one. Let's take a look at this coin ledger because yeah. I've done a couple of videos on it. I've showed people, but uh, be nice to get the experts to show us how it's all done. So real quick, just uh, pop in coin ledger and let's take a look at uh, uh, what it is and how easy it is. Again, when I've used it, API integration takes me 30 minutes for when I implement, push it all through, find out my tax uh, liabilities and then ship it over to my CPA. So let's take a peek here. Yeah. So a real quick overview. Now we are officially in the U.S. tax season. The IRS opened up for business as of today, January 23rd. Right. So Coin Ledger. You know, our team's been building this for now four and a half years. Um, it's pretty simple. What you're going to do is all you're going to do is create a completely free account. You're going to connect up the exchanges and wallets that you've used throughout the years. It's super easy. You can integrate them with really the click of a button. Or let's say you, you use a wallet like MetaMask. Um, you can essentially just copy paste in the, your public address for that. Um, you can't okay. see this part. But you're going to sync all of that up. You can see I've already done that with a bunch of platforms. Ethereum, we support a whole bunch of blockchains, wallets, platforms. Once you pull in everything to CoinLedger, we can track the basis and all of your assets, right? As they move from wallet to wallet. So this is where CoinLedger shines, where something like Coinbase doesn't is because we have your data stitched across all of your platforms. So we can actually tell you, you know, what's your basis in this amount of Ethereum on, you know, when you traded it for this IOTA on Binance and actually show you your realized gains losses for all of your transactions across all of your wallets exchanges. You know, again, this is what the centralized exchanges can't do because they right. only have the data from their platform. Um, all this is fully auditable, fully drillable to see exactly how this accounting data is being applied. Then you can, of course, generate and see what your capital gains were. This was for 2021 when we were all, you know, making money for 2022. <laughs> probably not quite as good, pretty much as flat. I think, you know, it was pretty much just holding. But again, all this is fully auditable for you as the user. You can go and see how your short-term versus long-term capital gains um, are being crunched and calculated. And then you can download all of the relevant tax forms that you need as a user. Really, that's the platform from front to back. Um, you know, if anyone has any suggestions on what else they'd like to see improve in the platform, we're always all ears. So hit us up in the comments. We watch that stuff closely. 
Yeah, sure. And then, uh, yeah, again, it's a, it's a pretty simple, simple process. Also, I think there's a, there's a, there's a one click button to send to your CPA. I know it's there somewhere cause I've used it twice. Yes. And that makes things a heck of a lot easy. And then also just real quick, so everybody knows you can get started for free with coin ledger. If you don't, if you're like, I don't really know how this works out. It says get started for free. There's a link in the description. Now look, coin ledger is a sponsor of the channel. If you cannot stand using affiliate links, it's fine. Just go to coinledger.io, but you're not going to get that 20% discount. But if you just want to start for free to see how it all works and, and integrate, it's right there for you to check out. And then I will say when you were going over this, this is the, the, the last thing, Dave, and we'll get you out of here, is I, got a, I, need pro I have problems with portfolio tracking. And I, we did a video. It was on uh, taking profits for dollar cost averaging. There's other programs out there that do it, but they, mm -hmm. I got to tell you, they suck. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have anything like that? Something that's coming down? Because I think you do and I'd like you to show it now. If you could, yes. please, because I'm tired of using these other ones and just be easier just to integrate very simply. Yes. So you and I were chatting before this call. Um, I love hearing the pain points that you have, right? Because then we can craft our products to better serve people like you, right? And there's a lot of a lot of people like you. You have a big audience. <laughs> um, Somewhat. But, uh, you know, definitely tools we're working on. I can't say exactly when this stuff is going to launch, but is like pure portfolio tracking straight from your coin ledger dashboard. So right now we, we do this, but at a pretty high level, we're going to get way more granular with our portfolio tracking. So we're going to show, you know, complete breakdowns of all the assets that you currently hold, what wallets you hold them in your basis, right. For all of your assets compared to the current market value. So yeah, you can great. see, right. How much I'm up or down in my whole of my holdings, but then we're going to enable people to drill in right to these holdings to actually see every single tax lot of Bitcoin. So for folks like you who have been dollar cost averaging, right, for potential years, they can kind of tweak things around to see, you know, like you were saying before, like, okay, past 60 days, what am I up or down? Because I was you know, dollar cost averaging for, right. again, the last 60 days. So this stuff is in development right now. You know, it's, it takes a bit for us because, again, we want to build really good products and have the user experiences be pretty seamless. But I'd love to hear people's feedback on yeah. what they'd like to see in a portfolio tracking product. This will 100%, you know, guide our development efforts. And, you know, we take all of that feedback into account uh, when we're building. Perfect. Yeah. So everybody watching this video and that'll be it for today is uh, give some feedback on that. Would you like to see a portfolio tracker? I know I would, but I'm just one person. So sound off in the comments section and we'll see. And then also, if you're looking for that link, there's a, a link in the description looks just like this. And also there's a deep dive video, which I show exactly how to integrate and use it. It's very simple. I mean, if I can figure it out, you can figure it out, but that's it for today. So look, David, thanks so much for stopping by. Uh, we do appreciate it. Also, I think we're gonna do some more of these videos. We're gonna get some CPAs on from your, that, that work with you to answer some of these, some people's questions. And we're gonna do it live over the next couple of months. Cause there's a lot of questions people have with taxes. I think it's just better just to get it out the way. So cool. we'll do totally. it. Thanks for having me. I look forward to chatting and I'll talk to you later, Rob. All right, buddy. Thanks so much. Yeah. Uh, that is it for today. Thanks so much. Bye.